If we worked on the assumption that everything thought to be true really was true, there'd be little hope for advance. This quote by Orville Wright perfectly states the mindset he and his brother had when defying Mother Nature. Because of this invention, we enjoy things like timely international travel or incredible global distribution. But if this invention was so crucial to the modern world, why did it take so long for them to gain recognition? By going over perhaps one of the most egregious cases of protecting intellectual property, we can understand the harsh truth of success. You can do everything right, and everything can still go wrong. It might seem weird, though. Many people learned about the Wright brothers in school and think they were immediately recognized for this. Somebody finally did it. Somebody flew. This was not the case. It was only through incredible resolve and innovative ideas that this happened. However, since I was a kid, I've been obsessed with biographies, starting all the way from Lincoln to up to Aleister Crowley. A very peculiar gentleman he was. The Wright brothers struck me as peculiar, though. It's, it's misunderstood. To go over the misconceptions, I'd like to focus on the most relevant, the first of which is the research the Wright brothers used to design their flyer. Wilbur did in fact gain research from the Smithsonian upon request. Of course, the research pertained to the pursuit of unmanned flight all the way back to Egyptian times. Um, and but the, the good, the unique thing about what they did with this research, as opposed to other people who had obtained the same research at the time, is they treated every supposed fact as a theory. They didn't build on preconceived notions, they debunked them. According to Harry Coombs in his 1979 book Kill Devil Hill, the brothers were highly critical of many of these studies. The most notable of that was Otto Lilienthal and Dr. P. Langley. Lilienthal seemed to obsess over the shape of his wings, but neglected the plethora of other issues within his gliders, as he never added an engine of sorts. Langley suffered a similar error, however, he focused too much on the power source and disregarded the fuselage charged with carrying it. Langley's engine did actually end up in future airplanes when the aircraft design was adequate enough to carry his engine. The brother's secret to finding functional solutions was a very progressive method. Coombs again in his Kill Devil Hill that came out in 1979 proves with first-hand accounts from the Wright family, um, his, his sister and their, their parents, and also their peers that worked with them and some who worked opposing them. It took extensive deliberation to change anything on the plane, anything with the test when, when they went out and experimented on the beach at Kitty Hawk. And other inventors, of course, had other methods, but according to Wilbur, they achieved little more than a powered leap. Through these experiments, and all these recordings and extensive, for the lack of a better word, arguing. The gap between the Wright brothers and their competition can hardly be overstated. Coombs also mentions the rudimentary showings at the St. Louis Con Convention. This convention uh, held a lot of inventors and their inventions um, according to modern interest. And at this time, heavier than fly, uh, air uh, flying machine was among the most. Most of these inventors, however, failed to even identify a power source for their, in, their planes. The Wright brothers, however, were less than a year off from their first flight in December of 1903. None had a comparable control system either. According to Ben Gareth in their 2005 article, 
Handling Qualities Analysis of the Wright Brothers 1902 Glider. The Brothers control system was excellent. Of course, relevant to that time. Langley never even managed to fly. He was the most notable of their competition. He simply catapulted, and I, I mean literally catapulted, a resemblance of a plane into a river. After about two tries on a, an equivalent to a million dollar contract from the US War Department, he quit. The, it was hard still for them to be recognized and it actually ended up being the most difficult thing about creating the very first heavier than air flying machine. The brothers made an early friend out of a businessman named Octave Chanute. This man had many connections and recommended the very beach they ended up studying at. However, that's where his contribution ended. Of course, this didn't stop himself from forcing himself on the brothers and, and also telling live reporters about the progress of the project itself. Can you imagine? According to the first-hand accounts from Coombs' 1979 book, Kill Devil Hill, the Wrights dealt with engineers from Langley's operation trying to steal their design, Octave Chanute and his associates trying to steal the designs, although Octave Chanute took it a step further by implementing a patent dispute later on, whereas Langley, it's not even known if he used any of the Wright brothers' designs that his engineers had grabbed, as he had openly disgraced many of the engineers who had come to him with these designs. All while this is happening, no country would believe that they had succeeded. It got to a point where Wilbur and Orville abandoned flying altogether for about three years. They were chasing contracts and Orville had come down with typhoid fever, a particularly deadly disease at the time, about a 50-50 chance is what is estimated by modern medical professionals who have studied the time. In other words, their passion had become a joke. During their fight to be given a test, the Wright brothers were of course fighting for their patent. In his 1979 article, The Wright Brothers Pioneer Patent, Rodney K.W. elaborates on just how many innovations this included. Various parts and systems were one of a kind, but news spreads fast, and this would not last forever. Shortly after finally getting their patent after three years of deliberation, in 1906, the Wright brothers were finally starting to make some headways in getting a contract. Unfortunately, they still had to make sacrifices for any. The U.S. War Department and the French, the brothers would have to relocate. Wilbur would go to France and Orville would stay in the U.S. While Orville was in the U.S., the new location was a change in altitude, requiring Orville to make minor adjustments, but he would have to wait for significant winds to carry the machine as at higher altitudes the air is thinner and his, the flying machine was, was much less efficient at its job. Wilbur, on the other hand, had a much harder time. Extensive damage had been done to the flyer en route to France, and many engineers were required to help him, of course, English, uh, not English-speaking engineers, and it took him weeks to finally even get a single flight. After Orville passed the requirements of the U.S. Department, he unfortunately suffered a fatal crash where he barely survived. Um, you might wonder why it's a fatal crash. Um, unfortunately, his passenger, Lieutenant Thomas Selfridge, was the first casualty of powered flight. Wilbur, in France, once he finally was able to get in the air, set records. He was flying for more than an hour, from even multiple hours, Riding in circles along the French park, he became so famous that his signature look, his, his hat that he wore, became a staple of French clothing. 
Wilbur did all this and virtually met every leader in Europe during this time. Princes, kings, queens, princesses, and even took a good handful of them up in the skies. And Orville, Orville was sick for a lot of this time. But once Orville recovered, they had made it. They had contracts with the U.S. War Department, France, and they were going to Germany, Britain, Ireland. They were going everywhere to spread this new invention because they had done it. Didn't take all that much, right? According to Stephen M. in their 2003 article, By Dauntless Resolution and Unconquerable Faith, to this day, they are celebrated around the world for defying the laws of man. But even when they succeeded, it still took half a decade to be credited. When the world reluctantly turned their way, though, they were ready. The Wright brothers called every supposed fact into question. They out-innovated every piece of competition out there, and they pested the world until they finally got their chance. People tend to see the they tend to see the Wright brothers as these lucky tinkering bicycle mechanics. But they are pioneers. And while the history is exciting to me, I know the hobby's not the most exhilarating. I only ask we take away one thing. There are over 7 billion people in this world. If you're one in a million, that means there's only 7,000 geniuses in this world. No, truly, the only way to be successful is to find what you love and make it better. Thank you.